Hey there Game Jammers, this is Jeff with the Click Team and I'm here to get you a quick start into using Click Team Fusion. So right away let's just jump over to Fusion and you can do this in the free version or in the full version, in the Steam version, it's all the same. And I'm just going to do File New and if you know Chris, a guy that works for Click Team, he loves to say that 98% of our users have no problem with that step. So hopefully you've made it this far. And I'm going to open up frame number one here. And frame number one, you can see the white area is the visual area. Any graphics we put on there will be displayed. I'm going to grab some graphics out of our library here. And just build a simple little breakout game. And uh, let's see, let's get a ball. And let's find something to use for a background, this guy. All right, Fusion is based on a bunch of objects. If I right click on this and select Insert Object, you can see we have a whole bunch of different objects we can add to the screen. Counters, dialog boxes, active system boxes, special Android objects, video objects. There's categories over here in case you wanted to narrow them down a little bit all sorts of objects. These can be made in C++, so if you're a little bit more advanced programmer, you can make these objects and sell them to other Fusion users, which is pretty cool. Let's just click on Active, and I'll put it on the screen. If I double-click on an active object, it opens up the Picture and Animation Editor. In here, I can import in all of the common file formats. I can use the included drawing tools, I have different animation categories, I have different animation directions, all sorts of cool stuff. So that's our basic active object. Let me just get rid of that guy. What these are, are basically active objects that have the graphics put in them automatically. In our library there's a couple thousand of these. And you could tweak on these a little bit. You can see different animation categories over here. All sorts of things. So it's a pretty cool little paint package. But you still do have that ability to just import in all of the common file formats. So if you're used to something else, cool. Make it, import it in. If it's an animated format, it'll strip out all of the frames and build your animation for you. See, we can loop animations. There's all sorts of cool stuff in here. Okay. Now, Fusion is based on properties and objects and stuff. So if I have something selected, like I have this player graphic selected right here, I can see over here that the property panel has his current properties. So, for example, if I wanted to change this object's name to player1 for some reason, then you can see that over here, now he's named player1. If I wanted to move his X or Y for some reason, I could just do it right in here. And he moved a little bit. So, the first property we're going to set for our little player guy is we're going to go over under here under the Movement tab. And I'm going to give him a mouse controlled movement. And I'm going to click on Edit. And I'm going to just define the zone that he is going to be restricted to for our mouse movement. Okay. All right, now I'm going to give you a little bit of a pro tip here just because it will make it easier for you. Let's switch over to the event editor. And this is where all of our programming takes place. And you can see we have objects up here. There's player one. There's a brick. There's a ball. I'm going to make us a nice little shortcut here of when the keyboard, upon pressing the key, space, and the application. Couldn't see it there for a second. There we go, and application. Now, why I did that is, if you have an object set to mouse control, you kind of get slaved to the mouse. So you need to think about some way to unslave the mouse. 
And for testing, it's just nice to have that little escape key to get back to the editor. All right, let's take our ball here. And I'm going to give our ball a bouncing ball movement. And let's make it a little bit more fair. We'll have it pick one of those directions when the game first starts. All right, and let's move our brick. I'm just going to move it over to 30x and 10y. And then I'm also going to duplicate this because a game with one brick isn't very fun. So let's do four rows of 19. That should fit pretty nicely. Oop, a little bit too far. So I'm just going to drag, select those, and delete. Okay. So let's see how our game is running so far. All right, so the ball flew off the screen. We do have control of our player, but we need to give it a little bit more logic here to make a fun game. So back over to the event editor. And let's make a new event. And this one's going to be under our ball here. And I'm just right clicking. And I'm going to test the position of the ball and I'm picking the sides and the top. So now when this is true, what do I want to happen? Well, I want that ball to bounce back. I don't want it to fly off the screen. So under our ball, I'm going to do a movement and then bounce. That's pretty easy. Now when the ball collides with another object, and I'm going to pick our player, I also want the ball to bounce. I am going to just drag and drop that down. Now, another fun condition here is the ball colliding with the brick. All right, what do I want to happen? Well, I want that brick to go away because that's actually part of the game. And I also want the ball to bounce off the brick. So let's drag the bounce down. And then let's destroy the brick. And I also want to play a sound here. So I'm going to go under Sample. Play Sample. And I'm going to go pick one off our hard drive here. We'll play... How about this Dewey one? That sounds pretty good. All right. So let's run our game right now and see how we're looking. I'll let the ball go off the bottom. All right, so it looks like we're doing pretty good so far. So let's make another new condition for when the ball goes off the bottom. We are going to destroy the ball. And we're going to go under the Create New Object column here, and we're going to create an object. We're going to create another new ball. And let's make it relative to the player. And I'll drag it up here a little bit. So that way, no matter where our player is, that ball is going to be created relative to it. Let's see how this is running. Let that go off. And you see another new ball was created right there. Okay, now most games have a lives and a score. So let's go grab some of those. And over in the games category, we have lives. Throw that on the screen. And score right there. All right, I'm going to drag the score down to this corner. And I'm going to put the lives over here. Say I didn't like the hearts. Well, I could double click on this. And I can put in whatever image I want here. So, let's say I don't like hearts. Delete that. Let's say I like uh, purple squares. And now you can see that I have purple squares. That probably wasn't the best since it's all solid. So let's just make this a little bit fancier. I'll just put black uh, border around it so we can kind of see on our lives thing how many we have. And there, now you can see that we have three segments on there. 
Okay, so every time the ball goes off the bottom, and that's this condition here, we need to reduce a life. Now most people are going to go look under our lives object and say, well, there's nothing here to do that. That's because it's part of our player one system object. So under our player one system, you can see that number of lives, we can do a subtract from number of lives, and we'll subtract one. And then we can go into another new condition. We can find our lives, and we can say when the number of lives reaches zero, we can end the application. I'm just going to drag that down. Too lazy to make all the other clicks. So it's nice about Fusion, just drag stuff around. All right. Let's see. What do we need to do? We need to do some score, too. So collision between ball and the brick. Let's add to our score. One. All right. So let's see how our game's looking now. You can see our scores going up. If we lose a ball, our lives go down. Lose another ball, lose our last ball, and the game's over. So that's the basics of building a game. When you're all happy with it, you can check your application properties. Right now we're set to Windows Executable. We can change this to one of the other formats. Whatever this is set to, we just do File, Build Application, and it's going to build our executable. Now, let's look at a few other things here before I let you go and get creating. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is Fusion can build any type of 2D games. Any type. This is our Indie Games creator's website, and this is where we showcase some of the best games made with Click Team Fusion or even our older products, Multimedia Fusion. They're all based off the same basic concepts. But you can see, you know, like Five Nights at Freddy's, one through four, all built with Fusion. You might have heard of those. They've done pretty well. You know, Fort Meow, um, Angry Video Game Nerd. We got console games, games that have been in hum Humble Bundle, Google Play games, which means they're on Android, iTunes, which means they're on the iOS, the iPhones and iPads, Steam games, games that are sold on Steam. So there are a lot of very high quality games. Any type of 2D game you can think of, you can make. We recently opened up a Discord chat room. And you can see in here, there's a bunch of people talking about Fusion. Let's say, hey guys, I am filming a video right now. And, you know, there's usually people in here if you need some quick help with this or that. Um, you know, they'll get right on it. Let's also look...